Hi guys and welcome back. Okay, so where it is, the three bedroom detached house that we're going to be extending. That's the full extension. In episode one, we focused on the right hand side, which is now completed. That is the rear to give you an insight if you haven't already seen it. This is the overall plan. We're going to be focused on the left side. It's a substantial extension. This is going to be one hell of a challenge because we've got a double story side. We've got a triple knock through going to happen, which is going to be extremely inconvenient, especially the bottom level. The front porch has got multiple steels, which a structural engineer had to draw up all the plans for. Me, my wife, our newborn baby, and my two-year-old son, we will be living in the extension. And to be honest, this is a massive, massive, massive part of why you need an awesome builder, because you need the knocked through if you're going to be living in the house while they're extending it. You need the knock through to be as late as possible. So I hope you enjoy our journey of building our dream house and hopefully it can provide you with some entertainment or insight. Okay, and we're off. What's up? What's come down? Bit of a pain when you've got things in the way. A little bit easier if you haven't got any structures in place. On both sides, we did have. So the garage is now coming down and it was a lot harder than the builders anticipated because it was a double skinned garage. This is really early on and like the point where you get a little bit excited. Even the wife's come out to inspect. And that probably explains a lot of things when the garage goes. And we're off. The diggers are digging. And you can see there at the back, we've left the back of the garage wall and there's a reason behind that. It isn't our boundary line. The boundary line is behind it. But what it does is it offers security to the premises behind it. And our neighbours were unfortunately away for a few months and they weren't able to be there while we was doing it. So we thought the best way to sort of crack on with the build and reduce the impact on the neighbours and on ourselves for doing the extension, we decided to saw down the garage, leaving the wall safely in place and maintaining the neighbour's boundary, while also allowing us to crack on with what we needed to do. Okay, so let's get back to the build. You can see here we're digging the footings. Uh, around the building we do have a change in approach later on to the footings as we did it slightly different before the building inspectors are crazy about this and you can understand why but they really do want to make sure the correct depth and i think it needs to be deeper because we are going double story okay so you can also see that we've got a cat flap in the side now because we've got the bifolds in the way so we temporarily put the cat flap through here okay so onwards and upwards now you can see the effect it's having and this is important because it does affect your neighbours and you need good neighbours, thankfully we did. And you can see here we're bringing in some stones just to tidy up the place. I, th oh, I can't remember the exact reason. The footings have come on really, really well. I think at this point they've been inspected and it is looking like a building site at the minute. And the thing is about this is you are open to all people walking past. Everybody can see what you're doing. You could put up a privacy fence but everybody likes a good nosy at what's going on and what's happening. And some, sometimes it's really, really nice, to be honest. So you walk around here and you can see there the old footings of the garage that was previously there. And look at that, we've got an electric box and a gas box, which is a problem. Okay, so it's been raining now, it's a little bit more muddy. As we wander on through, you can see the waste pipe from the front um, bathroom there coming down. That does pose a problem. Again, waste pipes on your property do pose problems, both sides for me. So we're looking a little bit tidy. At this point, we have poured the concrete, because in this extension, like I said, my builder, I'll call him Johnny B, because I'm Johnny, he's brought his mate along with him on the big job. And they decided to pour the concrete down rather than waste a lot of time laying blocks down there. Let's move forward. So, waste pipe still posing a little bit of a problem there. Well, not a problem, it just looks stupid. Let's wander around this way. Okay, so you can see a lot of bricks, because like I say, the builders, they need an optimal amount of materials to allow them to do what they need to do, but not to get in the way. So because the front's been rendered, we're allowed to use big blocks on the front. This is where my side door is going to go, which will be recycled from the front door. The existing front door is going to go at the side. And we are really knocking up some bricks here, if you like. Everything is looking a little bit cleaner than sort of on camera than it sort of was at that time, if I remember rightly. 
but at this point no inconvenience to us family are not being affected in any other way other than parking when the builders come and plumbers and electricians and everything like that sometimes it can get, get congested out there okay can you see here the builder popping his booty as well as the insulation board going down all right so we've pumped her out now you can see now we're getting under four heating on the side so we're going to have under four heating down here the insulation boards underneath the boards are like this because we're going to be having the the lads arrive with the concrete soon i think so they're going to be pouring the concrete down and they really to minimize the impact on the pipes down there therefore not causing a problem so you can see all that is an external wall there's the gas and electricity gas box definitely needs moving and that's where the underfloor heating is going to come up and the bricks are starting to take a bit of shape here really isn't it okay so there's the grim reaper putting down his concrete which he lays really nicely and doesn't it look nice like that at this point because it's exposed i was feeling quite vulnerable to people cats animals creeping across there but nobody did and it's set nicely and this is really a beautiful stage when that goes down because it cleans everything up it really does clean everything up so there's the pipe and duck underneath it the waste pipe and the blocks are starting to go up the blocks are in the middle it's a lot easier <laughs> and faster for them to lay blocks than it is bricks obviously so you can see here again we're maintaining the wall to stop it getting damp by putting things across it plastic things and also on the bricks that haven't moved yet and the reason they're heavy really heavy so now we move forward look at this we're starting to have a huge significant visual change on the front of the house so that's the feature length window again that's been rendered so that's why they put block down so they don't have to do as much work which isn't a dig it's just a fact it makes more sense so let's pop in through the window and again we're looking very clean very tidy really really honestly throughout this i have to seriously congratulate how great the builders was i think there's a little mistake there with the window being i think they blocked up a little bit high got a bit too giddy and got a bit carried away and gone too high tried to tell me it wasn't a mistake i still think it is have a little gander down the side which is a bigger area than I would have liked because I originally, for it to extend another meter out. But now I'm starting to think, actually, that might be a useful area outside. So we pop over to the corner, have a little look, and we've got the back wall, both skins in. And it's starting to feel like, look at that, feel like a room, but it still feels quite small at this point. To me, I remember thinking it doesn't feel that grandiose, like massive. And I wanted it to feel massive, but later on, believe me, it does. So that's the, what the window's going to look like from the ground floor, which we, you'll have a gander at later. And this is the complex part that I didn't want to negotiate on that entrance. And the reason why I didn't want to negotiate on that entrance was the entrance to the existing property was pokey and small and it, really difficult to like, welcome people in and being such a big fella I wanted a big hall entrance able to take me comfortably and the kids and welcome people in and just a bit more user friendly type of thing and but that caused a lot of problems obviously having to get the structural engineering the architect not being that keen on having that there with the planning permission that was also a little bone of contention with them more bricks have arrived block that's covered uh, the entrance is covered so nobody can get in it's really starting to take a bit of shape put a little temporary wooden fence in not wooden fence but a piece of wood to stop debris going to the nards and neighbors and it's starting to feel a little bit exciting and there's the window definitely made a mistake yeah Annie. on the inside got a bit giddy let's have a wander around the back And you can see that we had to try and match the bricks up as well as possible. Not really that bothered because it's the back of the property, but we did a decent job. It's impossible to get them due to weathering perfect. Here you go, let's have a little look over there. So you can see the shape is taking place, the two windows on the right hand side and the old door that's going to be recycled into that hole. Okay, then we had a visit from Walter White from Breaking Bad. Don't know where Jesse Pinkman was. And onto the building. 
it's really starting to take shape now uh, from the front. You can, if I drop back a little bit from here, or oh, you can see a lot of the block work has gone up. I don't know why those blocks are that shape, but I'm sure an expert can explain. Right, so we pop inside and it is really starting to take shape here. You can even see some of the joists there at the top starting to go in as we'll wander down in a minute. But the room is really starting to sort of come together a little bit at this point or the feeling of it still feels quite small and it doesn't until we knock that wall out to be honest but that's the sort of feel about our kitchen sort of dining room this is the view from the window in fact we're going to go through the window come outside still re relatively clean for a building site was never had a complaint from any neighbor at all Then we pop onto the second level. I'm not good with heights, so my confidence wasn't great here. So I wandered down the side and we have a little look at the bricks and round the back. There, there's the joist. You can, you can see the holes in the world where the joists are gonna go. Right, so back out the front, sun's shining. We've got the scaffolding up. There is so much scaffolding in this extension. I mean, you'll, you'll see as we go through this systematically, we'll just get more and more and more scaffolding. But this is stage one from the professional scaffolders. You've got to keep an eye on your scaffolders because one of the scaffolders did do something that caused a massive problem with one of the neighbors in the extension, which has been resolved now, but needless to say, it could have been avoided. It was a silly mistake where one of the scaffolders decided it was a good idea to uninvitedly hop into the neighbour's garden and erect a massive pole in the middle of it, which caused some problems uh, that we just didn't need, to be honest. And I'm pretty sure that if we would have popped around and spoke to my neighbour, they would have facilitated that pole going in the garden. It's just the very fact that one of the young scaffolders just decided to pop over themselves, but that was dealt with. Anyway, onwards and upwards. So go down the side here, and the outside is starting to take shape you can see there the second window as we come around the back of the property here the scaffolding because of the narrow shape of it is, is, is very difficult but manageable down there okay this is where the existing front door is going to go eventually and we'll pop inside and doesn't really feel like much now looking back on it of a change, but it was at the time. You can see quite a few have gone in now. In fact, they've all gone in pretty much. Apart from the front, which is causing the builders a bit of a headache, to be honest. Because they don't want to knock through because our family's in and they care about how lifestyle will be impacted. They're putting themselves second in this. So they really, I'd imagine they would have liked to have knocked that wall out right now. But they didn't. And we really appreciate that. You can see this hall, it's going to get knocked out. That's what we're talking about. That's the problem area. Okay, so we'll look up, up above and we're starting to get sort of the height of the room. Okay, so we're back outside. Now we're going to have a little stroll around uh, the front. It's really starting to take shape. The scaffolding is sort of hiding what's going on a little bit and it looks a little bit ugly with the scaffolding around, but nonetheless essential. You can see there the builders have really started to block up we're starting to move into that second level quite fastly. But my confidence doesn't reach the part where I can go straight up the ladder and show you. So we're going to go inside and do it differently. Getting around here was quite awkward. Okay, let's wander down here, around the scaffolding and in through the side door. As you can see, all the rafters are up now. Well, the insulation's actually arrived. Heading into the corner here. That's where the, the under four heating is going to come up into the corner because we're going to put the boiler in this corner where we're stood. But panning around from here, you can sort of get a feeling of the room. It's definitely better for the builders because they're sort of protected from the elements at this point. And it's a lot more secure environment so the builders can leave a few bits and bats if they want. Then we pop through, you can see the ladder to the second floor. There are, there are some bits and pieces, well I say more than bits and pieces, there's some big heavy blocks and they are heavy. I think there's something like 20, 25 kilo a piece. So if we position ourselves in here, we can have a little look through 
And that end is sort of like where our kitchen is going to be. Now, now we're magically teleported up onto the scaffolding. And my knees are knocking because I'm scared to death of heights. But as you look inside here, you can see what's going on. The blocking on the inside. The, the joists have gone across. And the brickwork's coming up. The insulation's in the wall. As we just come creeping across the front of the building here. So just have a look about what's happening. Okay, so let's pop back to the outside and we are looking to take shape. We've now got another level on the scaffolding to go up to the top. There's a brew there, always make your builders brews, always. And we've got warning, something to warn pirates off there, skeleton. As we look down the outside, getting around the building isn't easy at this point because there's so much scaffolding around. It's dirty, but it's not. It's, it's definitely a better stage than before. So we're just going to pop our head needlessly around the back. So have a look down the back. And then that's what it's going to look like. Two windows and a door. Now let's go in through the door. This is where they did all the mix and everything down the bottom. And the old trusted scaffolding to the side for now because the big boy stuff's on. This is where the boiler's going, as I mentioned earlier. Those two boxes are still inside at this present moment. And you can see that that window's correct on the right and the one on the left. Yeah, definitely made a mistake there, aren't they? Got a bit giddy when they were laying them bricks. The ladder's in position. I'm not too keen to sort of go for it at the minute. A bit like Melman the giraffe and you don't see many giraffes up ladders. Anyway, we're going to try it. Creep tentatively up this ladder, get to the top, and have a little look around. You can see, just imagine that, the weight that's in those blocks carrying all them up there. That's why they don't want to be moving around too much. You're starting to get a feel for the scale of the building. And I'm also quite happy that we didn't get that extra one meter down the left-hand side here, because I just think it would have been just too big. Still warning off pirates with that skeleton. Now, took that part out of the window from the inside, the block, and we come inside. It, it's not the nicest of areas, but it's as clean as can be, really, considering what is going on. It is absolutely madness. There's things everywhere, but just imagine if they would have knocked through the front part at this point and my family had exposure to this. So you can see there the window's sort of in place, a little window to the side, and you can sort of see what the second floor is going to show you as we look over a nice view there. I've actually managed to get up the ladders this time. Knees still knocking. See, the rafters are in place this time. We did order them and we didn't hand make them. My builder didn't hand make them. Good old Johnny B, B the builder, Johnny Builder. They come across, they must have gone for dinner because they've left all the tools out. And you can see the two separate windows at the back. That's what's going to get knocked out there. But just have a little look at the rafters going across the top as it joins. This part is super exciting because you're starting to sort of feel the room, the second room. So you're starting to sort of like visualize what it's going to be like in the future. And that's the view we're going to have from our bedroom. Okay, so back out the front, we've now got a peak on the left-hand side. The block work seems to be pretty much done. Other than obviously holding off the front porch mega steel area knock through that is going to be massively inconvenient. I mean, it's inconvenient to the builders still, but it's not inconvenient to us because we're still just coming out of our front door it isn't a problem it's like next door's having an extension at this point we've got a skip on hand so just be able to throw it throw it down and we've got more materials you can see there we've got the roof slates so access and getting around again not the easiest right pop our head through the window have a little look around you can definitely get a feel for it now 
the sheets that go under your tiles are on the top there so it's giving you a proper feels room i mean look at this picture from the outside you're getting a really good feel for the sort of scale of the building and then obviously we didn't want mixed tiles so we decided to tile the entire the entire roof of the building change the tiles on the existing to the new tiles and our timing was impeccable we took all the tiles off and a storm came in which was a lot of fun and we didn't sleep anyway this tile started to go on the roof which really changes the sort of way that the house looks and they match the tiles that are on the existing single story elevation, therefore bringing the house together. Because we've got a lot of anthracite on the right, we've got white window frames in the middle, and then we're gonna have anthracite on the left. It's sort of still looking like two or three separate buildings, to be honest, until the end when they all come together. So the house is really looking good. There's a hell of a lot of scaffolding, but that's not even half of what goes on in the end. The skip's full. You go through so many, so many, so many skips. It is unbelievable how much stuff comes out of your house during this. When they quote you and you sort of like five, six, seven skips, you're like, you'll never fill that. They do. They do. It just keeps coming. So inside, we've got a lot of stuff knocking around. It's hard to stay on top of absolutely everything. A lot of things have been stored, but we're going to pop our head up here into the first floor so you can see there the felt giving us some protection from the elements and preventing direct rain coming on it's just sitting nicely on top of the rafters giving it that sort of feel towards the room boom and here's a little beautiful picture of me and the wife dreaming of a happy kitchen there she is getting ready for it okay so the house is locked up like having a lecture and geez is there a lot of scaffolding here this part you just feel like you're literally locked in so let's have a little wander around the front here. You can see there's a lot of scaffolding and there's substantial changes at the front there. Can you see the door? That isn't the old existing door. This is a new door uh, that the builders acquired and, or has or put on the front to enable us to sort of stay as safe as possible during this process of taking the wall out. Again, it is detriment. I really know that he, he would have liked to have knocked that out, but there is a lot of scaffolding. I mean, look at that. It looks like, it literally looks like looking at this, look like the house is being like pinned down. Uh, it wasn't particularly nice to live in. Not super bad, but it was a start of it starting to feel like it was our extension happening, not a neighbour. So you can see the old, old door there. That was the old front door. We re recycled it, reused it, put it to the side. Because it can be expensive, this. Uh, you can see they would have really liked to have done that early, but they've, they've had to push this knock through back. There's still a lot to knock out, by the way. Let's go inside, see the boards are up. There's the, that's going to be our new front door there in anthracite grey, because that's cool. That's the window, it's in place. Very, very nice, eh? And the other windows are in place at the side, the door's in place. This is beautiful, especially for the builders who keep some warm. And we've got a new boiler, combi boiler, fitted by Marky Mark. Uh, lovely guy, to be honest. Everyone was lovely on this extension. I met some amazing people, and I think that's down to the builder sort of being like the core of it. Being a good builder has good people around him because they don't tolerate bad ones. So, because they all have to work together. And with this team that I had, uh, with the electricians, the plumber, even the concrete men that poured the concrete were amazing. The delivery drivers, every single person that came here, I don't think we had one bad apple. In fact, yeah, we did. The carpet fitter, he was a nugget. But never mind, that's another story. Right, let's get back to it. So we're upstairs now. Have a little look, look, look upstairs. And you can see more windows have gone in. A little window here. It's going to be at the side of my bed. And the big window there looking out. To give it that sort of airy feel. Looking out there at the builder's vans and the skip. But if we pan round, you can see we're still not not through the second floor, but the, the room is starting to take shape. So this is room one. I'm going to pop inside and sort of see what it'll feel like. This is originally going to be a walk-in wardrobe, but I think we're going to put the ensuite in there now. So if we pop out and walk across the, land, the entire bedroom, which is a substantially big bedroom, I do love it. And yes, the scaffolding is down. And the scaffolders, I always pay on full removal because you don't want them leaving there and then waiting for the next job to move everything on to the next after that. But anyway, we've got the scaffolding down. Look at that. The house is really, really, I don't know what you think, but I think, wow. I remember at this point, I was thinking, this house is going to be, or is, beautiful. 
and you can see the front is still not done. It's again at the detriment of the builders, but we're just gonna have a wander around, have a look. So the front door, or what is to be the completed front door, is now in place. It's got windows to either side to allow some light into the corridor or the entrance and make it feel nice rather than stuffed in like we were before. There's a trusted old scaffolding stacked up to the side. You can see here that's the waste pipe. So all that bending, shuffling and moving and that window, wow. Let's go down the side, the windows are in place. The old front door's there. We are gonna spray that later, which works out well to be honest. Round the back. Just looks like it's been there forever, doesn't it? And this side is starting to feel good, like a bin area. That's what I had in my mind at this point. Let's go in through the old front door, through the side and see what's happening. Okay, so just a lot of stuff. This is like a storage area now, to be honest. All the stuff is stored on the bottom floor and this is where the builders mix things, do things. Still relatively clean considering they've just gone on dinner this isn't end of day all these recordings are done during the day when they've gone off to dinner let's go around the entrance so you can see there's a lot to knock out but we're approaching that time they can't hold off any longer and the ladders are here my confidence is going skyrocketing so we'll shoot up here and go to the first floor still work being done in here so there's the window, it's going to be at the side of my bed, that's the front window. Rafters are still exposed, there's no plasterboard in at this point or anything like that. I think that's up very soon. And this is what was to be the walk-in wardrobe that may change, but at present it's to be honest my office where I'm actually doing the recordings right now. Because we haven't had time to do anything to it. Okay, so we go out here, we can see that's going to get knocked through very, very, very soon. That's the old window at the side to the landing. And the old security light there. And that's the view outside. So back to the outside again, let's go for a little tour again. You can see at this point it looks like two, uh, two or three houses. Because of the white, mainly around the windows, it sort of uh, breaks it into two sections. There's a lot of stuff like chipboard that we go through throughout this. But that window, whoa, that was that was my je ne sais quoi that on the extension. I really wanted that feature length window. Starting to take shape there. Walking down. Nothing's really happened around here. Let's go inside. Okay, so back inside, a little bit cleaner. Less knocking around, still got the problem with the gas, but we have put everything in place for that, for the gas to be moved to the outside of the property. Just can't keep it on the inside. So they were a problem, those two. Tonics then, on the window. <laughs> okay, let's squeeze down this little gap that's at the side to the back of the old front door and the little front door, temporary front door, that's been put on by super builder, Johnny B. Johnny Builder and T-Bone. Okay, so we go up the stairs. Dust, you can see the dust and the dirt, can't you, on the stairs there as we was going up. And you can see that we started the knock through. So they put a plastic sheet down. It's dinner time, so they've not put one back up again because um, obviously that would be a massive hazard. And they've knocked out there. And you can see the room is really starting to take shape. Now, I put a socket in the middle of the wall there because I thought I'd always have a TV there. I advise not to from the electricians. Don't put a socket in the middle of your wall. Me, I'm going to keep it there all the time. What's happened? I've moved the TV and the socket is redundant in the middle of the wall. They were right, I were wrong. Generally, they know more than you. So we've got the window taken out there at the back into the old little box bedroom. And my word, is that a box bedroom? Well, it's Christmas. Look, the Christmas decorations are up. So just in time for getting watertight or airtight or watertight or whatever you want to call it so the builders can not be frozen outside. 
we've recycled the side gates from the single story extension and put them on the left and let's go through them. Down the side things have been stored out here now, there's a nice little area and at this point I'm starting to think I love this little area. This will be perfect for my bins and a little shed maybe later. So we'll pop inside in the old brown door and the plasterboards have arrived, yes! So there's the wife in a kitchen but that kitchen's gonna go soon and we're gonna stick it where we are we're not gonna go all out and buy a 20 30 grand kitchen which is overpriced because we got quoted on a lot of kitchens and it's just ridiculous how much they cost we're gonna try and recycle that one from the corner you can see there that's where the gas pipe's gonna go down to the outside and some more insulation that's gonna go in the roof I think round past the front door and that's the second door. Up the ladder. Confidence is flying at this point getting up this ladder. One handed as a record just for you. And there's the window. We've seen it a thousand times, but it's going to change soon. Go into the corner. And looking at this, it's just amazing. Plasterboards are up, so now we are really, really getting a feel of it, of how things are, or how they are going to be. Pop into my little room. This is where I am right now doing the recordings. Let's pop back out. You can see the plastic sheet over there, and we've blocked up in the old window. So that's temporary because we're gonna be knocking that out at a later date. You can see there it's really starting to feel like a room obviously with a hole in a trap door okay back to the outside sort of looking up at it there aren't we all the windows open getting a bit of fresh air skip's been emptied or a new one's arrived nice clean and tidy as you can see through the gate everything's quite secure at this point wow look at that check it out we've got some plaster the plaster has been in or Somebody's done some plastering on the back wall and we've done one wall. Plasterboard started to go in around here. Still not taking that wall out. You have to applaud the builders for doing that, leaving it as late as possible and putting another front door on. You've got a glimpse of the old living room and... We did not keep any children in that jumper room, the circle of neglect during the extension it was just weirdly placed there during this recording i don't know why look at that we've painted i painted this and we have got electric greg's been in and we've put some spotlights in you can see my mistake on the wall that we was advised not to by the electricians there in the middle of it then pipes coming up with the radiators that are going to go in I remember this point when you do the painting, because we did the painting ourselves, or I did, it is amazing. But you're waiting for the plasterboard to dry as well, so it's like you're itching at it to get going. Okay, so you can see the light switches where they're going to go, and the lights. That hole looks like it's been there forever. This was the last to get plastered and took its time drying out back to the outside again so now we can see there's some work gonna start taking place on the front so you can see the top of the porch area or the entrance or whatever you want to call it I don't know what people call that area but it is starting to take a little bit of shape and work's gonna be done on the outside so it's gonna pop in through the side again which is where we store all the rubbish and inside look at that the plaster's dried a little bit and look Hmm, here comes trouble, the knock through. You can sort of see what we're going to be doing there, taking that out and how that is going to impact our family living on the other side. And here we go, it's still really tidy, isn't it? Showing respect for their environment, but that's where the wall's going to be coming out and the hall's going to be, the entrance is going to come back to. So you can see, if we would have took that out early, it would have been a major problem. To the back of the front door, 
dancing round poles and supports here because we're preparing. Dancing round poles and supports, that sounds like a great Friday night. Some plastic sheets to keep the dust downstairs. Like I said, suit, the main thing is respect from the builders, honestly. The respect that they show my family throughout this is amazing. And upstairs, due to my impatience, I bought a new bed. But it's really starting to look good, isn't it? Really, really starting to look. I've even painted the loft hatch. In fact, I think the wife did that. This room is still, well, I don't think it was an area of mass, like, let's get it painted quick, so... I think it just sort of got left because there's so much to paint. In here, this is where the bed was or kept that I'd ordered. Again, done the old trick of ordering stuff too early, which annoys the builders, especially T-Bone. Right, so here we go, trouble. That's where it's going to be knocked out on the left and the right. So that basically means our kitchen is going to come out to the left and the entrance here to the right, That's going to, the two walls are going to come down. The steel's already in place and the other steel running across the top. Uh, but it is going to get dirty, dusty, and that's the kitchen. The wife making use of the last bit of kitchen we've got for about a month. Basically, they're going to be working in our living environment. And as we've got a newborn baby and a two-year-old, it is going to be a challenge. But we get through it. We get through it. We get through it as a team. Because, like I say, again, and it sounds like I'm hammering this point home, but it's so important that you have the right team around you with the builders. So you can imagine doing this knock through earlier would have caused mayhem okay so some months went on because obviously we'd started the knock through and uh it was challenging so there wasn't many recordings done, done during that period but we'll take you on a little tour on the outside see but the window is looking good the roof is done there on the entrance and we're going to pop through the side through the door and boom the kitchen has gone from there to there. It was previously in that little U-shaped corner there. And the builders have been amazing, amazing. Whacked it in that corner. Whacked everything. That's recycled kitchen. And we're going to box in that um, boiler in the corner there. And this is the walkthrough. So this is previous to the kitchen. There's the wife with a cape on, looking like super angry. That's a superhero name. <laughs> That's why she's got a cape on. Uh, that's the old boiler on the right and the kitchen's there to the right hand side and it does look amazing when it's finished you can see the plastering's drying a bit everything's quite tidy this is the entrance here now and you can see they've knocked all the way back that's the little downstairs toilet let's pop outside so you can have a better view uh shut the door don't know why so we're going to go back through it open it up and that's the feeling can you feel it there now it feels nice and broad to sort of like walk into that area rather than the pokey one that was there before. Right, let's go upstairs, give you a show upstairs, which sounds incredibly wrong. Okay, the carpet man's been, and as I said, he was a nugget. And we have moved into living in here. Despite what's going on downstairs, there's a storage area. That's my little office that I took upstairs, which is actually where I am right now. Okay, so you can see the carpet is lovely. Uh, but the bed is absolutely huge. What is it? Not a super king. Is it a super king? The biggest bed you can get. It's massive. And this is the window looking out onto the front. Back to the front of the house again. And we have got progress. You can see the tiles are all on the roof, but we have got the vertical cladding going on. So the vertical cladding is going on there around the waste pipe, which was tricky, I believe. And it's starting to sort of bind the two side, uh, bind the entrance to the single story side and you can sort of get a feeling of where we're going to go but well, the windows are still white but it's offsetting the door really well i think the cladding even though it's not finished at all right so let's pop in for our usual side door entrance and look kitchen settled it's not really it's not really usable at all although we did sneak in to use that oven every now and again can see straight through here it's just a jungle really of being smashed through and all I can say is I'm grateful that this was a short period of time 
and it was left as late as possible so we could prepare for it, i.e. take the family out on day trips, go on little holidays, get out of the way and stuff. So you can see there, that is all the old kitchen. It's amazing, isn't it? Amazing. When that finishes, I'll show you in a bit, it is absolutely amazing, considering they wanted like 20, 30 grand for a kitchen. Okay, so, so the front and the cladding's finished around that, but the right window there looks a bit silly because it's still white. That gets sprayed later on. But you can see there, the entrance is starting to look beautiful. T-Bone's done a great job on the front there. The plaster boards have gone up, which give the sense of a feeling. And the wife took off her cape, so now she's just angry, as opposed to super angry. And you can see here, that beam. That was one of the things that, like, the architect was going on about. I actually love that beam. Let's go into the kitchen and you can see, let's wander into this corner. Wife uh, getting something out of the fridge. It's starting to feel very big compared to what it felt like before, isn't it? There she is. And here we go through to her. That's, there's the kids in his jumperoo, circle of neglect, and the other one and he's contained in his seat. And that's where we was living out of. Unbelievably, that's where we lived out of. The microwave, I don't know where it is at this point, but it was in that corner as well. Okay, so back down here. You can see we've put some windows in there at the side to allow a lot of light into the premises. And the reason being, they were quite dark houses in 1995. They weren't concerned with sunlight. So back to the entrance, and we've had the plaster around and the electricians and the plastering really gives the feel of the room makes it feel like a proper room you can see how clean and respectful the area is like i say this is dinner time from the builders this is how safe they kept our children and our family living in it look at that not the wife the kitchen diner sort of space that it's going to be it's feeling vast it's feeling massive it feels like it's been there forever then windows feel like they've been there forever and they weren't they've only just been put in so let's pop back down, but this this is that I remember being absolutely ecstatic and buzzing at this point. Look at that. Okay, so back to the outside again, as we prepare for a little walk around. You can see the house is, I mean, looking like a dream house to me. You can see the single story extension, which we've done in a previous video there on the right and now it's joined on to the part in the middle but the windows are starting to annoy me and I wanted the guy to come round and Andy to come round and spray him as soon as possible really because uh, I'm quite impatient like that pop through the old side gate there's the wife giving me the look of doom so I'll back off retreat as every good husband does Bow down to the superiority. And there she is. Quick, let's get in behind her. No pun intended. But look at the entrance. Absolutely sensational. I love that entrance. I do to this day. And the size of the door. We come in and look. Even though the four's tatty and that, you can sort of see and get a feel how we're going. The electric box is still inside, but the gas is outside. Kitchen there. Honestly, I'm gonna, it's going to blow your mind what we do with that kitchen. Blow your mind. And the hall, look at that, it's so vast all the way down. I don't know what it is. Off the top of my head, about 13 and a half metres from one side to the other. And the koi pond, koi fish Johnny's pond. The old living room is now a snug. Which sounds very posh. And down here, that's the boiler room. And the kitchen again. The wife brushing up. That's only because I got the camera out. It was me that cleaned up all the time. But just give me a look at doom again. Okay, so you can see that. It's feeling vast, beautiful, exciting. Right, so here we go. As I said before, you've been seeing what we're doing with the kitchen. The idea was to turn that top piece into one piece of sort of a marble effect. Uh, throw everything that was in the kitchen in the U shape in this corner. The builder did an exceptional job, a mint job. Super grateful. You can see there we've got a cut on the quartz top or whatever it is. I can't remember. There are one, two, and one by the sink, and one by the hob. And we're gonna basically turn that into one piece. Four pieces of quartz, basically into one piece of marble. 
So we get in touch with a lovely lady called Lisa, lovely Lisa, we'll call her. And she comes round, binds them together like this, sets everything up and puts a coat, a few coats, it's epoxy resin it's called. And look what it does. She has done a beautiful job. Look at that. It's hard to believe that that is like four pieces, it's one. So what we did, because we're the wife wanted a bit of glitter in it, it's got a bit of gold in it, a bit of grey in it, like a marbly sort of effect. It's not that expensive to be honest and well worth looking into. If I'll contact Lisa and see if I can put the details in the link below. So I'll put everyone's details in that I would recommend from the build. Some people are just happy with the workflow that they've got and don't want any acknowledgement from it. But some may want links in the descriptions below. So hopefully Lisa will. It is beautiful, isn't it? Hard to believe that that was once four pieces of quartz. You see around here as we just wander around. It's got a beautiful shimmer to it. The recording doesn't do it justice. But that just looks like a nice, luxurious piece of marble. Anyway, back to the build. Another super exciting stage. And yes, we've got scaffolding up, but we're going to be doing the rendering on the side. We've painted the windows, so it's all looking like one property now. Look at that. It looks like a dream property to me. Might not to you, but to me, I'm absolutely blown away with it and buzzing. And then, let me take you on the tour. Let me show you. This is the outside. Oh, can you believe it? Look at this. One beautiful property, one beautiful home, one beautiful house. So much work has gone into it. An absolutely amazing experience. And I can't wait to take you inside. I can't wait to show you what we've done inside. But look at that. That feature length window is just popping. The entrance just looks very grand and beautiful. Okay, so we're going to fast forward a few years and go into the winter. Come on in! Yeah, that's right, my wife's banged a tree in the middle of it, a big grand entrance. To be honest, I quite like it. Those panels that you'll see around are acoustic panels. House, we had quite a large echo and sound was travelling a lot. Upstairs, we're not going to cover that. Wives bought some more pillows, but nothing much has changed. That's Johnny's man cave. And that's the steel going across. That's the old external wall up there. Drop back a second. There you can see it. That's the old external wall and how narrow this entrance was. But now we've got this lovely grand space to walk into. So much so that we've got that tree there. So let's head off in. And the kitchen, wow. I'll tell you about the kitchen in a minute. It's been a journey. My cheese plant's really starting to grow a lot, isn't it? From the earlier videos. So the feature length window, absolutely love it. May tint it at a later date. The old front door there, reused, recycled and put into place. Let's pop over to the kitchen. As you can see, it is looking amazing in this corner. It cost us about a grand in total. The builders did an amazing job of throwing it in the corner, cutting it down. Lisa came and epoxied it, the surface to, it was originally four or five pieces. Now looks like one big marbly slate of love. And the wife put on some doors on the new kitchen doors and new kitchen handles. I created the shelves there at the top using old scaffolding boards that I stole from the builders and sanded down and stained. Okay, let's pop for a little bit of a closer look at that scaffolding board shelf. Oh, and feel free, I created an Amazon wish list for gin because I love a gin and a beer. Created a wish list for Christmas, not one person bought me anything. So if you've taken any value out of these videos, enjoyed them, or you simply want to buy Johnny a drink, feel free to visit the wish list and buy me a drink. <laughs> okay, so there's a closer up of the scaffolding board. And we'll just pan round, look at that. I absolutely love standing here, making a brew, having a drink, welcoming people in, chatting, socialising, or entertaining the kids. 
Let's go down here. Remember when the old kitchen U-shape was directly to where we are now? As we pass through here, and this is the other external wall, going to the single storey extension side, with the five metre by folding doors, which are amazing in the summer, and a memory wall up top. Okay, look at that, big changes here. It's the same couch, it's just laid out very differently. I think we'll need to upgrade that at some point, but it looks magnificent on this video. But it is the same couch that there was earlier on in the single storey extension. And let's drop back here, look at that. Waste pipe problem from the ensuite upstairs. What waste pipe problem? We'll turn it into a feature. Beautiful. Open plan. Love it. And the kids love it, the wife loves it, even the monster in law loves it, and Car Chat Bright. Come up here, the big TV. And there's the waste pipe. A bit of a closer look for you. I didn't put the mood lighting on because I didn't want to affect your mood. I think it makes it look a bit narrow on camera, but it is a big room. And that memory wall that we're creating up above. As you can see outside, it's mid-January, it's freezing. I think the temperature last night was minus two, so there is ice outside. I will redo this video at a later date. It's our table where we sit, we play Kaluki. We have a lot of fun, drinks, let the fish swim and watch them. We'll pop down here and I'll really show you what's happened to Johnny's little snug man cave, whatever you want to call it. This is where I spend a bit of time chilling out or if we have guests over that folds out to a bed. This is my favourite part of the house. I absolutely love looking out there. So I hope you enjoyed the extension guys, it's been one hell of a journey. Please like, please subscribe and I hope you've taken something out of these videos. Take care, stay safe. Coffee's Johnny, out.